It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Some people thrive on routine, and if that works for you, fantastic, keep doing it. But if it doesn't, and you want to make a positive change in your world, you just can't quite figure out how to make something stick, then today's episode is for you. Forcing yourself to do something at the same time, every single day, all of the time can sometimes feel limiting, it can feel boring, it can feel redundant, and it just might feel like it doesn't align. So how do you make a change without making a routine? How do you get something to stick and feel good about it? In today's Power Back episode, I'm going to share a method that I've been using that has helped me to incorporate healthy things without feeling so boxed in because routine makes me want to run for the hills. Before we dig into this goodness, this is your final reminder to register for the Mindfuckery Workshop with the early bird pricing. If you've been wanting to learn how to get out of your own head, get out of your own way, and to be able to move forward and feel good about doing it, then my friend, this workshop is designed specifically for you. In five days, I have witnessed women transform the way that they see things and already begin to take action that changes their world. Early bird registration ends on 211. So go to lauraora.com. There's a banner at the top of the page. Register and use the code GUTSY10, all one word, to save $10. All right, let's do a little shimmy and shake back into today's conversation, which is around routine. Now, again, I want to say that routine works for a lot of people, and sometimes routine works well for specific subjects, topics, or behaviors better than others. So for instance, I definitely have a handful of routines that I use and uh, like really thrive on in my life and in my business. There are other areas, though, where routine literally makes me want to put my head through drywall. So some routines that work really well for me are things like getting ready for bed and how I'm washing my face at the end of the night and putting on my pajamas. Like that could technically be classified as a routine, but I don't necessarily look at it like that. Something that does not work well for me in a routine is like an exercise program or committing to the same thing at the same time every single day. And that can be really challenging, especially when you are trying to incorporate a new healthy habit, you're trying to infuse something into your world. If you hear the word routine and immediately shut down, then I hope that this episode is going to give you a little bit of enlightenment to not only shift the way that you look at that, but maybe to give you a new method that works really well for me that I'm hopeful that helps you as well. The whole goal of this is to find something that works well for you. And I think where a lot of the tension, a lot of the resistance, a lot of the pushback comes from is from trying to make yourself do something the way that someone else tells you that you should. And you know exactly how I feel about the word should. The word should is nothing more than a lack of decision and ownership. It's leaning on other circumstances, situations, opinions, or suggestions from things outside of yourself that leave you in a space of wavering. When you're surrounded by people that are consistently telling you that you should wake up at a certain time every day, that you should get a certain amount of steps every day, that you should post a certain amount every day, that the only way to have success is to build a routine. Again, not wrong, It's just not right for everybody. And I'm going to bet that if you're listening to this, you're probably also a very creative person in one way or another. Us creatives, we like to get willy-nilly with shit and we like our flexibility, we like our freedom, and we like to be able to do things in our own way and on our own time. Forcing yourself to do something the way that someone else is having success doing it is what's causing a lot of this friction. Not to mention looking at routine and feeling like, hey, this is really limiting. This is boring to me. I don't like doing this the same way every single time. There's a redundancy to it that just feels very uninteresting. And again, this just like societal 
push, this pressure, this way I have to do things. If I want to be successful, then I must do it like this, as if there are no other options. I feel like this more often than not. So I thought, okay, well, if if I'm experiencing it, I'm going to guess that there's a handful of you that might feel like this too. So let's talk about it. The first thing that I recommend is just kind of pulling back for a minute and change the label of what you're classifying or identifying this thing as. Typically, the entire point of a routine is to build consistency and to see some sort of growth or expansion or change. But if you have an association with the word routine where you immediately shut down or you're like, "Mm, that's not for me, this could be an opportunity to say, hey, what if I refocused on the outcome of what I'm really trying to achieve here versus focusing on the word that's labeling what this is? So for instance, I don't look at my evening quote unquote routine as a routine because I'm one of those people that if you're like, Laura, you have to do this every single day, I'm going to be like, no, the fuck I don't. So if I label my evening kind of session with myself as a routine, I start to associate negativity with it. And the goal when I started this evening routine was to take better care of my skin, to settle into my body and my home for the evening and really set myself up for success for a good night's sleep. The beginning of any new thing is kind of challenging because it's new and you're trying to introduce this this consistency into your world. So at first, washing my face felt like a chore. It felt like one more thing to do. It felt like, God, I have to do this. And now I can tell you that I literally cannot sleep if I do not wash my face, put on my my pajamas, like do my whole thing. But if I say like, hey, this is my nighttime routine, there's just something about that that just doesn't feel great to me. So I just reclassify it. It's nothing more than something I do to help myself sleep better and it feels really good. And I happen to do it every evening because it helps me every evening. So sometimes reframing what you're calling it or how you're looking at the thing can make all of the difference. Like if exercise is one of these things, like you're trying to build a routine with it and that's just not landing for you. Think about what you really want to achieve from it. What's it going to help you with? Focus on how it makes you feel versus labeling what it actually is in the first place. The second thing I recommend is really evaluating, have you given yourself a chance for it to become something good? Like I was mentioning with the whole face washing thing, at first it felt like a chore. It felt like one more thing to do. It felt like, gosh, how how am I going to stick with this every day? How am I going to make this a routine? Well, maybe you're not making it a routine. Maybe you're inviting it to be a part of who you are. In the beginning, it's new. And you have to put some intention into it. And you have to put some some focus and really like talk yourself into doing these things. But again, if we're focusing on the outcome, we're focusing on how this is going to benefit you, then you have to give it time to feel those benefits. And once you start to feel those benefits after, you know, sometimes a couple of days, certainly after a few weeks, then you have this whole new like physical reaction, this emotional connection with what's going on because you have chosen to do this. So what is your why? I'm really emphasizing that today. Like what is the purpose of this quote unquote routine that you're trying to build? What is it that you're trying to achieve from this? And if you can really lock into the why and the feeling that you're going for, that can often shift your brain to say like, okay, I, in the beginning, I'm feeling a little bit funky about this, or it's not, you know, my normal thing, but I'm in it for the long run. I'm in it for that feeling. And sometimes one thing that can be helpful too is a term that I've heard kind of floating around, which is habit stacking. If you're already doing something else that is helpful, add this new thing alongside it. Put it before it, put it in the middle of it, put it after it. If you're already kind of introducing something else or you already have something solidified in your world, by habit stacking, adding this new thing onto that can help you to be successful with it. So for me, every day I was already putting on my pajamas or getting in my like lounge house clothes. So adding the face washing routine onto this made it easier because now those things are all one thing. 
those are just a couple of things that I wanted to help with some reframing and to help the mind just kind of open up to be like, okay, I, maybe there's a different way that I can see, look, or, fe- or feel about this. But if we're still kind of bumping up against like, okay, I, but I'm really having trouble making something new stick. What do I do about this? I've recently introduced a method of my own that I've been trying out that I'm excited to share with you. I think I nodded to this a little bit in a in an earlier Power Back episode. But instead of saying I'm building a new routine, instead of forcing myself to do something at the same time, on the same days of the week, in the same room, I've been using what I'm calling a bookend system. So let me unpack this first for a second. Again, I don't like being told what to do and when to do it and how to do it all the time. Like I, that just does not resonate with me. So I need flexibility with bumper pads. I need to know what I want, what I need, what I'm working towards, what my how is, the feeling that I'm going for. I need all that information, but then I need the flexibility and the creativity to be able to choose when I do it and how I do it. Because forcing yourself to do something when your body is not ready to receive, for instance, like if working out is one of these things and we are cyclical beings, right? There are certain times of the month where our bodies are like, um, no, the fuck you're not. Forcing yourself to do something in a routine when your body is not ready to receive it, it's, it's not going to help it stick. I mean, that's just how it is. But if I have a few key focus words, things that I know that really help me, and I know that I have the creativity and the flexibility to do them how I want to do them in honoring my energy, my time, my day, my schedule. Now we've got, now I've got something I can work with here. So this bookend system, I use in a lot of different ways, but in this particular subject, I want to know first, What is it that I want to incorporate in my world? What helps me to feel better? What helps me to improve my life or my business? And second, I want the flexibility to do it when and how I want to do it. So I've identified two key words that I know help me personally tremendously. And those are first is movement. When I move my body, my body and my mind feel better and are more clear. And the second word is connection. I do incredibly well when I am focusing and working with my energy. And sometimes that connection is expanding and tapping into higher stuff. And sometimes that connection is actually releasing energy. Those two simple focal points help my mind, my body, my, my business, my finances, like everything gets to be better when I prioritize those two things. What I'm not going to do is build a morning routine at 6 a.m. where I'm getting up and I'm going running and I'm forcing myself to meditate for 45 minutes. To some people, that works really fucking well. And if that's your jam, then that's your jam. For me, it's never gonna happen. But what I can do is choose how I'm going to incorporate these things into my day instead of quote unquote building a routine. So the bookends are connection and movement. And the space in between, much like a bookshelf, there is all different flavors, sizes, ways, times. I mean, it's just this open space that allows you to choose when and how. Now, a little bit of a caveat here, there still has to be some discernment and discipline to say like, I, I'm going to do these things. Because if I, one, don't choose some defining words or focal points to work on and with, that I'm not going to know what to incorporate. And second, even if I do choose a few words to focus on, and I don't put conscious effort into incorporating them, then, then they're just words. Sometimes it can be helpful if you're like a checklist kind of gal to have a checklist or something in your phone. Sometimes people do really well with reminders. So if that works for you, then do that. That's that's the whole point of this entire conversation is to do the things that work really well for you. So each day I'm like, how can I connect? How can I move? And then I get to choose. 
if it's been kind of a high intensity day and I've got a lot going on in my mind, I might choose to move my body by riding the Peloton bike because it helps to clear my mind. It's got a little bit more grip behind it. I'm able to release some energy, like it feels really good. And then I might choose to connect by going outside and grounding, putting my bare feet on the ground, regardless of how fucking cold it is outside. I had a lot going on that day, but I've chosen intentionally how to move my body and how to connect. And that is an incredible success. Another day, I might be in a more like intuitive, creative thinking type of space where there's a lot like of just internal movement. I'm I'm doing a lot of things on the inside. So moving my body, walking is amazing. There's so much clarity. And I'm also connecting because for me, nature is a really big thing. So being able to stack these together can also be really powerful. So if I'm taking a physical walk outside, not only am I moving my body, but I'm connecting with myself and nature at the same time. So if I'm really having an all up in my head type of day or, or I'm just being really creative or I have a lot of ideas, walking helps me to like work those things out. And I get so, so many downloads in my brain and in my body when I'm outside walking. This is also particularly helpful too on days where I'm feeling stuck or days where like it's just not coming to me and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Movement and connection as a singular pair, like as one thing can fucking fling those doors wide open. Another day might consist of movement through dance. I love, (laughs) I mean love to put on like 90s hip hop and shake my ass. Like there is just something like that moves so much energy. That is, uh, it's a good sweat, like the under boob kind of sweat. Absolutely. From a three and a half minute song of shaking your ass. Mm-hmm, that's what's happening in my house. And in the same respect, I also love, have learned to love the power of meditation. I know you hear that a lot. And it was, again, one of those things where I felt like you had to do it a certain way until I found out that it doesn't really fucking matter. Meditation can be something as simple as drinking your coffee on the front porch alone for 10 minutes in silence. A tool that has helped me though is because I have a Peloton bike. That means I also have the Peloton app and they have meditation, guided meditations on there. And sometimes it's as simple as a five or a 10 minute meditation where I am just still. I'm going through the guide. I'm tapping in. It helps me with my connection. And it really has been helpful to quiet my mind and help me set up my day for success. I'm giving you all kinds of examples because I just want you to see how f- how much flexibility and freedom that you really have. As long as you are focused on first identifying, it could literally start with one thing. That is can be one of the most successful things to do is choose one. If you're feeling ambitious, go for two or whatever feels best for you, but identify what it is that you want, what works well for your body. And then two, make an intentional effort to incorporate those every single day or three times a week or once a week to get started. Like whatever gets that moving, fantastic. But using this kind of bookend system You get to call the shots and how it works best for you, depending on your day, depending on your workload, depending on how you're feeling physically or mentally. And one thing that I didn't mention with all those examples is the time of day is fucking irrelevant. Like I much, much prefer to exercise in the evening. I, I know not many people do that. I've always felt weird because I'm not you know, exercising or at the gym at 5 a.m. It just doesn't work for me. It will not happen, period. But jumping on my Peloton at like seven or eight o'clock at night and like riding some shit out to some really loud music, that has my undivided attention. Taking my walk after dinner to like decompress from the day works really well for me. Versus the meditation stuff works really well in the morning because I haven't like got up and got into stuff yet. This system has helped me tremendously to focus on and incorporate things that work really, really well for me, that nurture my body, that help me to make conscious, healthier decisions. And they stick. They stick because I'm working with myself. I'm doing it in the way that works best for me. I'm doing it in a way that supports my mind, my body, my nervous system, and just the way that my brain functions. 
And if you find yourself in this type of category where you're like, I'm really trying to make good change, but it's just not sticking, give it a try. Identify one thing. What's one thing that works really well for your body or one thing that you really are are excited or interested in adapting or incorporating into your world? And then bookend that shit. Take some intentional time every day to say, you know, this is the thing that I'm incorporating. How do I how do I feel like doing this today? And see if that sticks for you. I'd love to also hear if this works for you, if this resonates with you, because I'm telling you, it's been a game changer for me. It's really helped me to incorporate movement and connection every single day. It's feeding my body and in a way that is supportive to the way that my body and mind naturally work together. So I'd love to hear what what stands out for you from today. What is your one thing or two things that you're going to bookend? And what really spoke to you today? I'm the one that answers all my messages on my social platforms. I'm at that Laura on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram specifically. By the way, this is the type of content that I love to help you grow with inside of my coaching containers, inside of my workshops and classes. And the Mindfuckery workshop is the next opportunity to do that. So a reminder that the early bird pricing ends this weekend on 211. So go to lauraora.com. Click on the Mindfuckery workshop at the top of the page and enter Gutsy10 at the checkout to save 10 bucks on your registration. Get out there, my friend. Do things in your world and for your body that resonate highest with you. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.